I'm Jean Schumacher, founder of the Plant-Based Academy, where I provide help, support, guidance, and resources to switch to a plant-based lifestyle and to get your health back. Today, I have the privilege of connecting with the most amazing, like seriously, the one and only Chef AJ. She is the queen of quick and easy plant-based recipes, the culinary wizard behind delicious dishes that are oil-free, refined sugar-free, and salt-free. And she has done it again. She has a new cookbook that is available on Amazon called Sweet Indulgence. In her new book, she has over 150 delectable desserts, perfect for every taste and preference. Once again, she just outdoes herself. For those of you who don't know Chef AJ's story, she's been on a plant exclusive diet for over 43 years. Her passion is showing people how to make delicious healing foods. Her books on processed, how to achieve vibrant health and your ideal weight and the secrets to ultimate weight loss chronicled her transformation from an obese junk food vegan diagnosed with precancerous polyps to a vibrant advocate for whole foods and what a journey she has had. Truly an inspiration to so many. So thank you so much, Chef AJ, for taking the time to be with us here tonight. Hey, well, thank you. And thank you everyone in the Plant-Based Academy for tuning in, whoever else is watching this replay. So yes, I am Chef AJ. And on Sunday, September 1st, I will be vegan for 47 years. I wasn't always trim and I wasn't always healthy. I used to weigh 70 pounds more than I weigh now because I was completely addicted to sugar. And now I can indulge my sweet tooth in a guilt-free way using recipes made from the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the fruit. I'm going to make one of my favorite recipes first. These are called thumbprint cookies, and these are very easy to make. And another nice thing about them is that it only makes six or eight cookies. So if you're somebody that doesn't like to have a lot of dessert laying around, if you have a sweet tooth, this might be perfect. So we're going to start with our oats. I always use gluten-free oats. Even before I was gluten-free myself, I always knew there was somebody that needed to be gluten-free. So why not make it so everybody can eat it? And I'm going to add my vanilla powder and vanilla. This is actually not vanilla powder. This is vanilla bean powder. It doesn't matter what brand you get. Just make sure it's pure vanilla bean powder and that it's brown and not white. The white powder is highly processed. It's got dextrose and it's not true vanilla. Vanilla bean powder is just vanilla beans that have been dried or dehydrated or cooked to a, just a very drying way and they are ground up. It's a lot more cost effective than using, say, the vanilla bean itself, which would be great if you could. And it's just better tasting, in my opinion, than vanilla extract, which is just a watered down vanilla and either will have sugar or alcohol. So to keep this book sugar free, we're not using vanilla extract because alcohol I consider a refined carbohydrate as well. So I'm just gonna process this in the food processor just to a breadcrumb like consistency. And you just kind of want it like breadcrumbs. And it's okay if some of the oats are still intact. I like the toothsome quality of that. If you would rather use oat flour, you can, keeping in mind that that's going to be more expensive than just grinding your own oats. And then we're going to add our pitted dates. And hopefully they are pitted. They say pitted, but that doesn't mean they really are. And when I have more time, I cut each of them in half so that I don't get it stuck on the blade when there is a pit. If you know somebody that's 100% raw, like my friend Lissa Maris, they do sell sprouted raw oats now. And so you can make this recipe 100% raw. You just wouldn't bake it. You would probably either just leave the dough as is or put it in the dehydrator. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it into a ball here. And this kind of crust that I do out of oats and dates is very similar to the crust I made over 20 years ago, what they taught us in culinary school. So these oats are so much lower in fat than nuts, but they're still rich enough and delicious enough that they make a wonderful cookie or pie crust. So what I just kind of do is I divide the dough into as many pe equal pieces as I want. I can try to get, it says it calls for eight, but I like them a little bit bigger. So then I get more jam. So it doesn't matter if you get seven, eight, six. So then what I do is I roll them in a ball because that'll make it, more round before I flatten them. So what you do for thumbprint cookies is traditionally just press your thumb in. However, that would not hold enough jam for me because I want more jam than cookie because I love the jam. So what I'm going to do is just spread it out more so I get bigger surface area. We're 
do you get your ideas for your recipes? Growing up, my favorite cookbook was the Betty Crocker Boys and Girls Cookbooks. I loved that book. I wish I had kept it and maybe somebody in my family did. I think you can still actually buy it. And I used to make things from that book, especially the tinglings. Those were my favorite. Those were my brother's favorite. You basically took chocolate chips, melted them, mixed in Wheaties, made them into clusters on wax paper and froze them. Boy, did I love them. So I get, I guess I get my inspiration from things I used to eat <laughs> and like before I was vegan. There's a lot of wonderful fruit sweetened jams or make your own with the recipe in my book. It's called chia jam and it's simply chia seeds and your favorite fruit. If your fruit isn't sweet enough, you might want to add some dates or some date syrup or some date paste. The chia seeds is what will thicken it. I'm just going to pop these in the oven for five minutes. These are what they look like when they're done. I like the jam better when it's cooked. It's super yummy. So next, I'm going to make the banana chia pudding, which can be a dessert. It can also be a breakfast. In my blender, I have one cup of non-dairy milk. Use your favorite. And then I'm going to add the rest of my ingredients, which are my bananas. You want to make sure your bananas are ripe, nice and spotty, because otherwise your chia pudding won't be sweet. And this is the only sweet in it. No, there are no dates in this one. And there's no vanilla in this one, sadly, because vanilla bean powder would discolor it. And you can use other fruits other than dates for sweetening. Bananas, apples, pears. There's just so many things I use in this book. And so first I'm going to blend this together. So just to give it a nice mouthfeel, I'm going to add a little bit of my gluten-free oats and my chia seeds. And I am using white chia seeds. And even though they say they're white, they're still not really completely white, but they're less dark than the dark. Because if you use the regular chia seeds, it will discolor your pudding. And that is it. I love this picture of the book with all the spoons. If this does not thicken instantly, it will thicken as it cools. And what I like to do is add fruit on top, especially a pretty fruit like raspberries. But I'm not going to add it right now because then they will sink. I'll wait till it gels up. So... So the desert date shake, I tend to call for Deglet Noor recipes, but for the date shake, I do say Medjool if you can. And Medjool are like three to four times larger than the Deglet Noor. They're, they're huge. Sure, I probably should have soaked these in advance, but that's okay because I do have a high-powered blender. And then I have all my ingredients pre-measured. I took these to Mexico when we made these in the class just because it's easier if there's a recipe you make all the time, whether it's a soup or a shake to not have to measure it each time. But even then, I still smell it to make sure I, there's no cumin or something in there like fenugreek that was supposed to be for something else. Usually I do put a piece of tape and measure it. And then I'm going to just blend this. So I've got my two bananas. I took them out of the freezer. So now I'm gonna blend again. If your bananas weren't frozen, you can add ice. The thing is, is when you add ice, it, it actually, kind of cool thing because it actually lowers the calorie density because you're increasing the volume, but it also dilutes the flavor of the nutmeg and the vanilla bean powder. So this would be the one recipe where I would say you've got to have the vanilla bean powder in it for it to really taste authentic. So this is kind of fun because then Charles can have his shake and I can have a different dessert made from the same recipe. Now, if you like a coffee or a chocolate flavor to make the mug cake, you can add either a tablespoon of cocoa powder or one to two tablespoons of an herbal coffee substitute. And then I'm just going to stick this in the microwave. It's never too soon to start thinking about the holidays, in my opinion. So the holiday parfait has three parts. I did make one of the things in advance. There's two cranberry sauce recipes in the book. One is sweetened with dates and oranges, and that's just called five-minute cranberry relish. And the other one that I have here is called cherry peri cranberry relish for people that maybe didn't want dates in their relish. That is just amazing that like in a minute you have like a cake. And this can be eaten right now hot, or it can be eaten at room temperature or cold. So next is the pear whipped cream. We're going to take our pears in pear juice concentrate or in grape juice concentrate. It's just so much easier to just use the canned pears. And most of the juice was drained out. We use a lot of oats, so I just keep it in a little Tupperware container and then I refill it. And I, yeah, I keep a half cup container in, a uh, measuring cup in it at all times. Just makes it easy to do. And then my vanilla bean powder. 
like I say, uh, usually I have my whole mise en place done and things go even quicker. That really is the secret is having your everything measured in advance or at least having it out like I have makes it go a lot quicker than running to your refrigerator and pantry. And then I'm just going to blend this. This is going to be our pear whip topping. Definitely chilled is best, but we're going to use it to plate our parfaits once we make the other components. You could even put this on oatmeal. I mean, this is very low fat, low calorie density. And it just kind of gives everything a little bit extra special yumminess. And the pumpkin mousse is a recipe of its own, which you can make without making the other two components. All of these are their own components. So basically I'm gonna make date paste, but I'm gonna make it orange juice that I soak the dates in instead of traditionally water. Vanilla bean powder, it's become a joke with all my friends because I'm at the, gonna be 65 next birthday. And March 1st, I'm gonna get Medicare and I've never been happier about that in my life. This is kind of a cool can opener if you've never seen it. I originally was exposed to this when I taught healthy cooking to the blind at the Braille Institute, because blind people can do almost anything sighted people can do, maybe with the exception of, you know, drive is probably not a great idea, but I taught them how to play poker and paint and play blackjack and cook. And what's nice about this can opener is it, oh, this is the old one, is it doesn't leave a jagged edge. And so if you have a regular can opener, even an electric can opener, it does leave a jagged edge because what it does is it cuts into the can and then you have pets or raccoons in your trash and then they cut themselves. So it's really cool about this. And this one happens to be Tupperware, but XOXO and Xylus make one. All it does is it pulls the top off. And what's so cool about that is you can't cut yourself. So I really recommend this kind of can opener and, and it's just safer for everyone all the way around. I'm going to add the pumpkin too. I probably should have done the dates first, but it's going to be fine because this is a high-powered blender. If you don't have a high-powered blender, I would do the dates first and make into a puree. What's cool about the thing I just showed you with the can opener, especially if you get something that nobody likes to eat, like, you know, they, they have like greens in a can, you wash it out and you can put it back on and then you can keep your jewels in there. So like when the filler comes to your house, he's not going to look in a can like that. So that's something cool you can do. When it comes to certain things like vanilla powder or spices, I don't buy them, you know, it's a 99 cent store. I buy good quality like local spicery, or at least I get the Saigon cinnamon somewhere else because that is the sweetest cinnamon and it actually tastes like sugar. You could also use pumpkin pie spice if you prefer. So we're gonna just blend this into a pudding. I could also add just a little, little bit more liquid like orange juice but then it might not be as thick. So I'll give it one more little blend. I think it's almost perfect. This smells really good. And just like I said, you could just have this. You don't have to add those other items, but the holidays are coming. Ideally, everything would be chilled, but we're going to plate it right now. So we're going to take our pretty glasses, try to kind of even it out. But then we're going to take our cranberry relish, nice and thick, because fruit has a natural thickener. I should probably get a little spoon and even it out a little bit. So this is kind of a lot. So when we eat this, probably my husband and I will, this is, I'm going to keep going and making it another layer. We'll probably end up sharing one. It is pretty, the contrasting colors. Seems like I have way more relish than anything else. And that's okay because the relish is good. Even, you know, cranberry relish has so much sugar. It's amazing. And I don't, you know, you, you do need some kind of sweeteners because cranberries aren't sweet but it's incredible how much sugar it has. It's in cranberry relish when you really never need to use sugar unless you want to. Cinnamon buns that are good for your buns. So I'm gonna start with my milk, non-dairy milk, some dates and some yellow raisins. I always use yellow raisins. I'm not a big fan of the not yellow raisins because I have my aluminum-free baking powder, which you can also get sodium-free if you choose my vanilla powder, and my oats. Okay, and now what I need to add, which I forgot, was the cinnamon. How much is there? There's quite a bit of cinnamon, but that, after all, these are cinnamon buns. Before I add my apple cider vinegar, I'm going to blend this first, because when I add the apple cider vinegar, it's going to cause a chemical reaction with the baking powder. So let me blend this first. It's like it's chemistry or something, an acid and a base, you know, chemical reaction. Mm. 
Mm, right up my alley. So let's get the bananas in here. So I like to use, you know, sometimes adding things like bananas so that I'm not only just using dates all the time. You know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but the, uh, bananas have a lower calorie density. So for, for people for whom that's important, it's good to know you can use other sweeteners. Okay, I've got my banana here. So now I am going to add my apple cider vinegar. And it's going to magically start to poof up. Sometimes it poofs up so much that I've had it actually come out of the blender. So I'm going to pour this into my silicone muffin pan. The one I have here has sides. And I really do recommend that more than the ones that have the flimsy sides. So just kind of smooth it out. Plop, plop, plop. Going to bake these for 30 minutes. Next is the frosting. I've got my handy yams, which have been roasted because it brings out the natural sugars. You can see how it gets nice and caramelized when you roast them as opposed to microwaving them, baking them, or steaming them. Just much more delicious. And they're, they're not mushy like the orange ones. They're, they're, just, they're just, I think, a better texture. But this is delicious. Any of the cookie recipes. So here's your vanilla frosting. You don't always need tofu or nuts to make something creamy. White sweet potatoes are the ticket. So I did pretty good. I think that was like seven, eight, maybe nine recipes in about an hour. And the only thing that's not ready is the cinnamon buns. So if you have any questions at all about how to use fruit as a sweetener or take out the oil or the sugar or the salt or the flour. There's only two flour and two recipes in the book actually, but it's virtually a flour free book as well. You are amazing. Honestly, oh, thank you are you. so incredible. Your recipes well, <laughs> are just wow. Thank you. Thank you so You're welcome. much for taking the time to be with us. Well, here thank you. Share your amazing recipes. So thank you so much, Chef AJ, for taking the time to be with us here tonight. Well, thank you. And just know, that, oh, I just want to show you. Did I show you this picture? I, I show it a lot. The seven-year-old can make my recipes. So can you. <laughs> oh, so sweet. He's, that's precious, Luca. And speaking of so sweet, uh, I, I, I was born with, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I was born with a sugar spoon in my mouth. So I've been eating dessert for a long, long time. And there's, that's the proof, you know? Cool. So thank you guys very much. And if you have the book, I hope you enjoy it. Here's one of my favorite pictures. And if you really enjoy it, consider maybe putting a nice review on Amazon. That also helps. But thank you thank so you. much, everybody. Thank you for coming.